we have our marketing and community relations update. Let's do it. Yes. Um, so I'm going to give an update on our 2015 business plan which was a resource I provided to the board last month. I'll provide an update on our, where our targets are and where we, our current numbers are. Any project activity you'll see um, in the update, Andrea and um, Stan will um, report on as well in their report. But I just have the numbers, so they have project information updates. Um, so, project by, by type. Um, these, the project by type slide didn't change from last month because um, this is going to be a, a, our from the whole year um, activity. So the calendar year um, of projects that we are working um, by type, recruitment, recruitment, existing company expansions or ex existing company retentions. Um, project by stage, this did change um, last year with, um, from last month. And so you can see the funnel um, of stages that our projects are currently in. Um, as of today. Leads by source. Um, the leads by source um, did not change from last month. It's, it's, it's the same, but this is where we are looking at where we are finding leads um, this year. So where are they coming from? How are they getting um, to us? Whether that be from existing industry projects, um, products we're working with the state, projects brought to us by a broker or, or prospect as they just they found us and called us. So you can see the layout of that report there. And then also the project by industry um, did not change from last month, but you can see um, the industry sectors and the projects we're working in each of those sectors. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. So the one that found us, mm -hmm. did you question them how? I think we usually ask them how they, you know, how they found us. Um, and in the conversation. Usually with the new prospects that we're looking at, I mean, I could go back and have to look and see which ones those are, but um, they have usually, um, we are competing with a community in Florida. So that's, we're usually competing with the Jacksonville area, um, Lake City, um, Lavo, Tampa. So we're usually competing with that northern Florida and southern Alabama. And so we've gotten drawn into the mix with that. And so they've usually found us and called us. But how? If you would ask them specifically, <laughs> what made you think of our strategy based Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, project development, there was one they found us online. And they just, our okay. location, right. they found us on our website. And like when they saw them, she gave us a call. Project Gold is here because of the, of the product that they're producing. Those producers are predominantly in South Georgia. So, that's how they found us. A contact that they have here locally. And we, um, I think that's a field in the Salesforce part software that we're using to generate these reports. <coughs> and I can pull a report each year on you know, that once if, when we fill in that information on each project on where the leads come from in a second report other than the state. If they're found us from a website or a trade show or a conference, that information is also can be documented in with each project in our software, new software we're using. The, the reason I ask is because I did that one time. Yeah. But what I did was I knew an area where I wanted to be in general. And so then what I did next was, I got a map. I'm kind of a map guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking where the highways are. I'm looking where the railroads are. Um, and, and when I saw that and when I saw where they came close together, if there was a town, and then I would go and so then I would have like five places or whatever that, that were sort of suitable. And then I would go see if they had land. I, I mean, so it was, it was it was a process that the process. Um, for our um, new products we're working our target for the year is 15 we are currently work we currently worked 17 projects which is a goal that we again will probably readjust um, what going in the future um, again we took the we created the targets overlooking the past the activity in the past two years two or three years um, average and so that's 
we're, we're working out the kinks of our new software and, and what goals and metrics we've, we've put in place. But um, it's nice to have this program to see it, um, even on a daily, day to day basis when we come into the office and are working and putting in information into the software. Um, project uh, client visits on new projects. Uh, so these are actually projects we're working who have come and visited our community, have been you know, live on foot in our, in our community. So um, we've had five visits for, from the year. Um, expansions and announcement. Uh, we have had six closed expansions and announcements, which you, um, our target for the year is seven, which um, we can also look at readjusting um, at this point. Um, and you can see here each of those um, expansion and announcements that have closed um, for the calendar year. So if I'm doing the math right, we're, we've worked twice as many projects this year so far as last year, because we've done as many in six months as we did last year in the whole year. Is that what you just told me on two of those different things? Well, we, I mean, we looked at an average of projects for the past two to three years to come up with a target. Um, so if the average of the last two or three years is 15 and we've already met it in six months, then we're doing twice as much activity. Is the rate we're at is twice this is, as the this prior year. I don't know. You this is calendar year. This is calendar year. Yes, yeah, so yes, you're correct. Because yeah. based on... Um, I mean, that's a good story. That's a real good story to say y'all have done in six months what we did in a year on average. It's very good. We're doing a better, I mean, we, the, historically we've used Excel spreadsheets. So we've just kind of gauged how our activity has been from that. So this will help us be, keep track, better track of it. But here's our capital investment numbers as well. So yeah, so our capital CapEx um, goal target for the year is 45 million. And you can see we're halfway um, to that goal as well. You can see a lot of our projects that we are seeing are heavily in capital capital investment rather than job creation. So that's new technology, new equipment, um, going into um, existing companies um, and, reten and retention of those companies as well, existing industry base. Um, new jobs from the expansions and announcement. Our current number is 95 and our target for the year is 200. So again, almost half, a little bit close to halfway um, there, and we are close to halfway through the calendar year, um, almost exactly at half the year, calendar year. Existing industry visit visits, um, you can see here the list of visits, companies we have visited um, throughout the calendar year so far, to date. Our goal um, target is 50, and that um, total number is 21 visits. So that's the business plan um, update. Any questions, information? So the, that intelligence, um, again, we are, the new software we've implemented, um, and so I actually met with a graphic designer today in order for us to take this information and, and activity that we are, we, we are working on on a day-to-day -day business, um, day-to-day -day in our office um, to create an infographic um, message platform in order for us to um, distribute um, to the general public for communication to show the metrics and benchmarks that our, our organization um, is working you know, and is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So we should have um, a conceptual of that for our next board meeting. Um, so when I left here in May from our board meeting, I went to Callaway for the Georgia Economic Developers Association Spring Workshop where we were a um, sponsored break um, during Wednesday's breakout sessions. And uh, it was a coffee break, and so we took um, some co our coffee mugs, um, our landmark coffee mug, to the conference, and um, they were able to drink out of those um, during the conference. And so this, these are a couple of our buddies, and um, even at the luncheon I was at yesterday, they were like, I had coffee out of my Valdosta mug yeah, Sunday morning. So, um, they enjoyed that, and it was a cool opportunity um, for them just to see how creative and um, things, how creative the opportunity we have to be creative in our market, in our field. So they enjoyed those. Um, 
almost, I guess, two weeks ago now, we had um, five project managers from the state, um, two from utilities, um, Electric Cities of Georgia and Georgia Power, and three project managers from the State Department visit us in Valdosta for a really quick, short time frame, but they were able to stop in several um, South Georgia communities that um, neighbor us. And so they saw um, a great, um, diverse, you know, product of South Georgia from Tifton, Adel, Brooks, and Valdosta. Our goal um, in Valdosta was to put their feet on the ground at our regional training facilities at Wiregrass and at VSU. Um, we you know, are in Atlanta and have conversations with project managers um, daily or you know, weekly on our product and what you know, land and buildings we have available. Um, and so that's easy for us to showcase you know, through presentation or, or webinar. It's hard for us to get their feet in actual hands-on at our training facility. So that's what we did while we had them in Valdosta. And so this is Dr. Anderson at Wiregrass giving a great presentation of you know, the training that Wiregrass provides um, for workforce and a lot of cool programs that they have um, are implementing for seamless education starting in high school with dual enrollment, which Angela was with us last month to present, present on. But then also a new program that they're working on um, on giving college credit for experience. Um, and so there's more um, marketing that we're going to see on that program, but they all um, took, took away that that, you know, that was going to be a great benefit for our community and for South Georgia um, for the companies we work with. So we were able to you know, have some dialogue with their leadership, and then we went and took a tour of several programs, this being the welding program and um, Angela Krantz, um, did a little pre-planning for us and had the Georgia logo um, cut out of um, some of the materials in the welding department and so um, they were able to, we had those for them for a souvenir, we're going to kind of um, mount them for them and deliver them at a later date, but they were able to see the cutout um, take place at Wiregrass and they were all excited um, that they're going to be able to put that in their office. We took a trip to see the, the trucks in the CDL program, um, which um, Wiregrass's program has been recognized um, through in the nation as a na national program. Um, and from the instructors were very um, great at you know, just talking about how they have recruiters come into the program and most of their job placement, you know, their students find job placement with the recruiters that come to the campus while they're you know, completing their CDL program and that their programs are, are full, you know, there's, there's a waiting list for those programs. And this is an industry that, you know, we see a, a huge growth opportunity in um, just with some workforce trends that are, are taking place, there's, you know, an aging population and retirement. Um, so the trucking industry um, is growing. We also took a look at, um, this is kind of like their video gaming um, program. And so the instructor there was very cool and, um, just the activities and instruction. This is a, digital media is a growing um, industry in Atlanta, and so seeing those um, courses being you know taught in Valdosta for um, students as well to create that activity and engagement with the um, digital media program. Um, we had a little bit of fun, and so we went to Wild Adventures, and this was just kind of like a blooper of the week, um, a highlight actually. Um, Matt from ECG attracted lots of birds, and so I just was able. And his sister is one of my good college girlfriends, so I was like, this is, this is fun. The next morning, um, Friday, we met over at VSU and had a presentation from Dean Pumbley from the Langdale School of Business and also um, one of the faculty members that's over the curriculum and teaching of um, teaching of the program to the entire campus. Um, so they were both able to provide information on what, you know, curriculum is being taught in the classroom, research, pro research projects, um, just the, the way classes are taught, the um, intelligence that students, you know, receive and the challenge, you know, the brain think challenging of their knowledge um, through the classroom and 
kind of how this classroom has flipped. So it's kind of cool to see the whole how the educational environment continues to evolve to meet training for future workforce. Um, this is obviously in the new um, campus on North Campus, which was I got to see several classrooms and classrooms and labs I hadn't been able to see before, and um, it was really cool um, to hear um, the directors of each program you know, talk, walk us through several of the um, cases with the, the dummies that they use, and so um, that was good. And then also they have some great um, equipment for their exercise science program um, across the street, and um, it's cool to see all the way that they can benchmark the human anatomy um, for programs and that how in depth that program is. So they're really um, the project managers are really um, impressed with what they saw. We um, last month with the Valdosta Daily Times, our our business spotlight, we took as an opportunity to um, showcase the business retention action team um, and the members of that and the you know, goal and of having those members a part of it, you know, to assist our existing industries to continue to help them um, address opportunities that their companies may have to cre create more jobs or make additional investment. And then also um, our announcement with South Georgia Pecan um, was um, on the front page of last Tuesday's paper. Um, and that press release had um, great coverage with Valdosta Daily Times um, and Valdosta CEO, and then also was posted um, on our Facebook page, which we received several um, click-throughs to the articles for more information. Um, the next slide is a little teaser. Um, we have created a campaign that kind of spun off from our partnership with Valdosta Daily Times, um, which you know, the first eight months we were working with existing industry spotlights and created that article as made in Valdosta. So this is um, a graphic that we created with a designer um, and we'll have t-shirts um, to um, have let people wear, just create some community pride on what uh, goes on in our community. Um, and then there's also some additional ideas that have kind of a brainstorm um, in, in order to um, provide existing industry appreciation through this campaign as well um, to the employees. Let's see. I think that's all my slides, but I do have a couple other things. Um, I just wanted to let have, have you know that we will sponsor the Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours November 10th, Tuesday, November 10th. I know this is far out, but I've got it reserved, and I want you to have it reserved on your calendar as well. Um, this is going to be a great opportunity for us to give back. We are going to actually host this at Second Harvest Food Bank. Um, they have some expansion that they're doing at their facility with some funding from One Georgia, the Department of Community Affairs, which we um, took the DCA executive board on a tour of a couple months ago. But I'm working with Eliza, their marketing um, director, on a campaign for us to do on how important um, hunger affects you know, our whole holistic of working and wanting to you know, help and of our community. And so we're going to um, do this as a, right before Thanksgiving, so I think it'll be a great opportunity it's just to be a great corporate citizen and, and give back to our community. Um, and sh it's located in one of our industrial parks, and so they'll be able to <coughs> see what other companies are located in that, that park as well. This month we are working with Stuart. We kind of worked out some of the ideas we had for our article this month, um, this morning, but we will do our article on the site selection process. And so we will cover three phases of the site selection process. We'll um, cover community evaluation in phase one, phase two, site search and analysis, and phase three, negotiation and final selection. And so we'll give a good, we have a great piece for us to educate the community on the site selection process. Similar to how Mr. Jerry Jeanette went about his. That's all I have to report. Any questions for me? Uh, project report, Andrea, or Stan? Any more questions?